like, have you experienced any difficulty making your children understand your obedience to God's call? And um, let me add to that, like, um, for some missionaries that went to the field before they had children, um, do you feel that, um, was, was there any um, impact towards your commitment to your calling as a missionary when you had children, or was it a blessing, or, I don't know, you know what I mean? Um, like some of the some of the missionaries went to the field without children. They, they went as just a couple, and then they had children during the mission. Did that um, affect their commitment to their to their calling because they had to spend more time with the children, or were the children children neglected because of uh, they feel like that they have to God has to come first? Or but the question here is difficulty. Um, have you experienced any difficulty making your children understand your obedience to God's call? Oh, I want to say something. Uh, my children are so young, so they can they can tell me nothing about that. But <laughs> not, not yet. But I think my children is the most difficult area that I have experienced in the calling of God. Because for me, it's so, so hard to, to see them grow uh, far, far, far from the family. So it's, I, I know a lot of people here can understand me, can understand my point. So it's so, so difficult. But sometimes I see them and I can see that they are so active and so happy. And, and I say, oh, thanks God, because God is, is taking care of them. And one experience that I like a lot to share is when Eno was born in Mexico, so he spent two years in Mexico and then we moved to North Africa and Benjamin was born in, in North Africa. But when Eno uh, went to North Africa, he speak Spanish like Mexican way, you know. So he started the kindergarten in, in North Africa, but the school was in Spain. Spanish school, so he started to say something like, ¿Y vosotros qué queréis? Like something like Spanish, in the Spanish accent. So it was so surprised to me, can hear my son say something like that, but guess what? Now, the another day came to my house and start to sing the official Filipino song. <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh my, and when we came here, he was always telling me, why we moved, I want to go to my, my other school, why we need to be here, something like that. And now he's singing, singing the Philippine song, so I think the things are working good. I think your attitude as a parent can make a big difference as far as what happens with your kids. I do say value your children. They are only with you a short time. And they should never be pushed out of the way for ministry. But they should never be done that on the field or at home. And so any way you look at it, you always should have a priority with your kids. But one of the things we tried to encourage was that our children would be involved with us and do things with us. Our son was a little older. He was around 11, I guess, when we got to the field over here, and um, you know, it was an adventure because he would go out with his dad to different villages and things, and so that added, he had a chance to see new things and do things and, and be a part of it. Um, but I think God prepares them too. If God has called you, you should be asking the Lord to prepare your kids, and then it's going to depend on the age, because like she was saying, hers were very young. Ours were a little bit older. But Weldon told you that he came home and said, now is the time for Indonesia. But we did not tell the children then because we were going to wait until we started through the process that's long in the PG in the Sundays about America. But um, during about a month or two after that, I was the head of the children's church and I, I taught in the older group. And my son was in that group. And we had a really special time of prayer there and everything. And we came home from church that morning. And my son said, Mom, you know, when we were praying today, I saw darker-skinned children saying, Come, come, tell me about Jesus. And he said, I think we're supposed to go to Indonesia. So God had already been preparing him. And, and I believe that if we have...
have a, that attitude of prayer and knowing God has called us, we can trust him to uh, work in our children's lives too. But we do have the responsibility as parents to always guard and meet their needs too. Well, you know, my father is a pastor and then I was just born and raised in a pastor's family. So I have a lot of stories, you know, in terms of a bad experience, you know, about how godly people they are, you know. You understand what I'm saying? Even just I have scars on my body. Because when I was just three years old with my brother, he was just four years old, my parents were really busy doing home education. So we had just left over behind, you know, in the house. So I was so hungry, and then I just picked up just, uh, what is it, a um, uh, pot of uh, water, um, kid, what is it? Um, Kiddo. Yeah, Kiddo. But I didn't know that it was boiling water. So just I realized that it was so hot and threw it away and it just it covered my whole body. So I was uh, just, I lost my consciousness. So in thinking about all those things, and I want to really make sure that, you know, I don't want to make my kids as victims of my dedication or my obedient life to the Lord. But sometimes I also realize that it is me as a parent who are so much oversensitive. That's why I need to say that it is a great challenge, to be honest, when it comes to children's education. And we want to make sure they receive a good education, good food, and a good quality life, and whatever. Because we we have so much you know, pity on them. But I begin to see that they are stronger than what I you know, thought about them. So even thinking about the moment that Abraham sacrificed his only son, then I, I need to start thinking about how, 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 what kind of feeling was that, you know, I saw, I mean, um, you know, to be there. But I realized that as strong as your relationship with God, and then together with the relationship with your kids are really good, then I, I realized that everything is moving, you know, in a good way. So even though we are busy and sometimes we need to sacrifice our life and make sure that your kids are really understanding what you are doing and that they are feeling like, oh, we are loved by our parents, then they do understand that they, you know, my parents are doing this because they love us so much. They love our God who loved us. You know, something like that is so much important for us to help their, our kids to that develop their thinking and perspective their way. So and this is something that I'm really experiencing nowadays, and, you know, and then I'm really grateful that we are taking this journey together. Yes, um, I, I, I can um, talk from both sides as a missionary kid. Since I left home when I was four years, Friends and I followed them until I was 17 years old. And I remember my parents worried a lot about us, my sister and me, because we were moving a lot um, from country to country. And now that we are missionaries, I, I see how we as parents worry about our kids. And then I remember my early years and I realize that sometimes we as parents worry more than them. They are more adaptable. They will have very good memories. They will, as, as long as they are with, with us as parents and, and we provide a, a, a secure place at home, and they, they, they will, I, I think they will also enjoy the calling of God uh, for us. And, and I remember uh, before I was 10 years old, uh, we, we moved in three different continents living. And, and, and sometimes it was very hard that, uh, to leave school. It was really tough to leave school, leave all my friends there in elementary school, high school. But after a few weeks, I, I forgot the, the sadness and the pain, and I was happy again in the new place, enjoying my new friends, and my parents still worried about my, uh, what we left before. So, uh, sometimes um, we worry uh, so much that God takes care of the kids. If, if he called us, of course God knows um, about our kids and God knows what they are going through. And, they, and God will take care of, he, of them uh, in, in, in the aspects of their life that we cannot. We cannot, uh, we cannot 
not um, keep their their heart secure. That only uh, belongs to the Holy Spirit. And we do, as parents, uh, we go as far as we, we can, protecting them, trying to give them the best. But there are some things we cannot give them, just God will. And I, I'm pretty sure that uh, if we follow God's call, we try to do our best with our children, God will take care of the rest. All right. Um, I think we've got enough time for one more question because we have two minutes left. And um, this is a really good question. I think I'll start from Barbara because I think she wanted to speak about this tomorrow. Um, the question here says, what is your advice on burnouts during the ministry? And if the missionary's heart was, um, is exhausted and injured, how, to, how would they recover? So what would be your advice to somebody like for a young missionary that's ready to go into the field and they might come like might come through like burnouts in the, in the, in the ministry? Um, what would be your advice and how not to be burned? We talked about this a little bit the other night at the dinner and I see the heart of people because maybe you've seen other people burn out and you're afraid for yourself. But one thing we have to do is to really learn to balance our lives and have the right priorities. And um, I've said this to people. You know, God said he created the earth in six days and took a day of rest. And yet we think we can go seven days, 24-7, Year after month after month, or week after week, month after month, and we're not going to burn out. If God said it was a day of rest, are we that much stronger than God? <laughs> no, we're not. And so we need to learn to take rest times. We need to learn how to set aside that time. And where I've seen the struggle for so many is when you work, you're not the head person, but they're, you're, uh, you're under someone. And they're the one that dictates your time. And you feel like you can't say, okay, I need some time off. But somehow you have to get across, you know, for my health, for my being able to function, I have to have a break. And you have to make time for it. Balance is so important. And um, it's, it's important that we think about I don't want to share the whole thing, but um, it's like we, we are here and we are depleted by certain things and we are encouraged by certain things. So we have to determine what takes everything out of us and what fills us up. What, I mean, like worship. Some people, they say, just worship just adds to me and encourages me and I feel rested and, and refreshed. Someone else says, I need time by myself, away from everybody to be refreshed. Or what takes it out of you? Is it ministry, uh, different elements of ministry, or is it maybe people, or, or what? And so if you have something that is depleting you, you have to learn what's going to fill you back up. I hope that makes sense. I can see the picture, but it's hard to say what I'm trying to say. But, you know, you have to find out what will help you renew and renew and renew. Because there are things that are going to take it out of you continually. So what is it that also fills you back up? It's like a gas tank. If you drive and drive and drive, you run out of gas. The tank is empty. You've got to go fill it up. So what in your life fills you up? What renews you? What refreshes you? what takes it out of you. That's what you've got to decide, and then you've got to make sure you do those things. We'll just go along this way when it gets to Jim Kim, and then I'll hand it over to uh, uh, Reverend someone to summarize it and uh, finish it up for tonight. I, I think some practical uh, suggestions would be, number one, always have some form of exercise. Get out, walk, do a bicycle, get on the treadmill, whatever. And uh, that, that to me is very, very important. Number three, eat right. Eat right. Eat a balanced meal. Uh, eat good foods. Don't eat balloons. <laughs> <laughs>
scuba diving. <laughs> Anybody want to learn, you just let me know. I, I think it's really important to have something outside of the ministry that you're really passionate about. Something that you really enjoy doing. Find out what it is and make time for it. Because you only make time for things you really enjoy. And so, so find out what is the thing that, you know, that you you really enjoy doing uh, that's not ministry related and set aside time to do it. And perhaps you, you know if you're under the water, nobody can get in touch with you. <laughs> sick, very sick, and because of stress, back. So, um, yeah, I, I went to the doctor, he said, I need to do some exercise. I'm not doing that here in the Philippines, but I need to. And also, if um, missionary families, they have small children, maybe to sometimes do some activities.
guess, do you have any answer, Lee? <laughs> uh, there, there have been some very stressful times here at APTS in the past. Not for a long time, but, um, and at times, you know, just ready to say, you know, I'm out of here. But,
really wanted to do it tomorrow, but I would like to take this opportunity to pray for all of our missionary faculty and missionaries who are serving here at APTS. And uh, perhaps you would have noticed um, that uh, that it's not easy to be a missionary. Um, it's not, you know, you talk about children. Well, wait till your grandchildren come. Yeah, it's even more difficult. I still have that in my mind. You know, my grandson is a very special man. Every time we leave, he has to cry. He has to throw a tantrum. He wants to follow us. You know, and the last time we came, we, he followed us to the uh, train station. And uh, he was asleep at the back. And, but when we arrived, he woke up. And uh, he started to cry. Strapped at the back, he couldn't come out. He, you have to say goodbye to him. And uh, he's just crying because he doesn't want us to leave. Uh, it's uh, not easy. It's not easy to be a missionary. But these folks here have served 18 years, served how many years, you know, all this. They have given their lives to missions. Uh, and I, I know that they are enjoying the time here too. Uh, I know that this is perhaps one of the easiest mission fields to begin, Baragil, uh, APTS. Uh, we don't die of malaria or something like that. Uh, and yet there are, there are challenges. And I appreciate them. I appreciate all my colleagues and I want to pray for them. And as you do that, I, I don't want you to feel any sense of guilt or, you know, uh, that you are not suffering in Sudan or Somalia. <laughs> I want you to know that if you hear the word of God properly, the Bible says the truth will set you free. <clears throat> we are not here to give you that sense of burden and guilt. Why are you still here? Why you should be in Africa? You should be in India? No. We are here to let you know if you will say, I will this week, the Lord will lead you further. You don't have to be like the Hulkers. You don't have to be like me. If you only say, I will, Lord, the Lord will lead you further. You know, I never expected to come to ABTS. If you say, I will, there's a whole life of adventure waiting for you. But these few moments, I'd like you to pray uh, for us, uh, who are serving here as missionaries, and I like my uh, colleagues, faculty, to come to the front. And if you would take this opportunity to pray for us, we we'll really appreciate that. Uh, we have uh, had the opportunity to pray for you over the last few days, and I want to do it tomorrow night. But I'm not sure how the atmosphere will be tomorrow night because there will be people from outside coming. So I like you to come. Those of you who are missionary faculty, come. Huh? Remember, I don't want you to feel like, oh, I, I should be like them, I should be like them, I should be serving. No, no. The truth will set you free. This week, if you hear the voice of God correctly, properly, you should be free. You should recognize that the Lord has more in store for you. Why don't you come? Come around uh, our missionary faculty here. Pray for all of them. Pray for us. Pray for us. Lay hands on us. Uh, no Fijians here, you can put your hand on our head. Yeah. So, just pray for us, bless us. Allow the Lord to use you to bring a word, perhaps a prophetic word, to our ears. And that is here from God through you. Hallelujah. That we'll be encouraged by your prayers.